Hello, El Karma family all over the world. We are so excited to be with you once again to the uh, dwelling place. You know, we uh, just the Lord put this show in my heart when things were really going bad with COVID and everybody like walking fear and depression. And I just, the Holy Spirit, you know, spoke to me that we should do this. And the only safe place is a dwelling place, is the presence of the Lord. And basically, we come together, we worship God, and we hear amazing testimonies. So please stay with us, invite someone, text someone. You've been given to the Word so much. Now it's time to come to the presence of the Lord. So put away anything can distract you and dedicate this time just to honor God and to worship Him. And, and, and you will be blessed. We're going to have amazing, amazing praise and worship, and amazing stories and testimonies we're going to be hearing tonight. So I uh, want to welcome our friends here, uh, Kevin and Teresa Didman. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We're so excited to hear what <laughs> the Lord has been done and the way God is using you. So, so honored to have you guys tonight. It's, it's an honor to be here. Oh my gosh, we're so excited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. And we have amazing people as usual. They uh, help us with the praise and worship and they just lead us to the presence of the Lord. Thank you guys for you always been available. So faithful, so sincere, so genuine, full of passion. And you love Jesus. This is what matters, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Margaret and Chris and Sandy being with us here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, that being said, we're just going to get into some uh, praise and worship. Just prepare your heart. Connect with the Lord. We need God. There is so much bad things are going around us. But the good news that God is available, His presence is available. So let's just uh, surrender ourselves this time and dedicate our time to the Lord totally. Worship with us the best you can or just focus and meditate on God and His love. This is what living looks like. 
what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you come on this thing this is this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise giants fall fear cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lifts him up with all creation cry god we'll see you we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall fear cannot survive when we praise you
can have my heart if this is your prayer tonight I would definitely encourage you just search your heart because the word and the devil try to throw things in our hearts and sometimes we don't know but I would take those moments as we're singing as we feel God's love and God's presence right here and just search your heart search your heart it's, it's a precious moment now and you want to give it all to God, that He will be the Lord and the Master of your life. Your life will be totally transformed. As we come here and as we worship, as we tell the Lord, you can have my heart, we do mean it. And I hope you do now. And God want to give you a beautiful heart. God want to give you a clean heart. God going to give you a new heart. God want to set you free from any addiction, from any lust from any struggles you're struggling with, if you allow him to come and, and take over and lead you and you give your heart to him and you mean it, your life will be totally transformed. We're serving a living God and we are here for you because we know there's a good news maybe you don't know and there is a better life with Jesus. We can testify it not by words, by our lifestyle and what we do. We're all here because we love Jesus. We're all here because He changed our life, because he, we're giving Him our hearts, and we still do every day. And I hope you do tonight. Just I pray a short prayer until, Lord, I open up my heart for you. 
Maybe I don't know things. Maybe I don't know the wickedness of my heart. Maybe I'm so deceived like the Bible said. But I give you my heart. I surrender it all. You guide me. You lead me. You come and your light will shine through me. And I need you. I desire you. Say, I need you and I desire you more than anything else. And I want to give you my heart to be yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You guys are amazing. The worship is so awesome. Thank you, thank you. We're going to come back and spend some more time with worship. But now we're going to have our, our most amazing, amazing people. I don't know where to start, but uh, we're so honored to have you guys. Those people, just God used them. They're, first of all, we are fearless. <laughs> they are risk takers, yeah. they're so creative, they're sold out for God, and they can do anything for Jesus. That's right. And God is, is just uh, so, you know, pleased with your heart and what you do. You've been serving in uh, Bethel for 18 years and doing all the creative stuff, the uh, fire starters and treasure hunts and yeah. creative arts and on and on and on and on. <laughs> So uh, I want to just uh, hear your story, and you've been married for 40, almost 45 years. Almost 45 years. Next month, or two months. That's yes. amazing. You yeah. were two when you got married, probably. <laughs> That's right. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so happy to, uh, to hear from you and the wonderful people who want to hear your story, what you've been doing and what you're doing. And also, you just encourage people because a lot of people do love to do what you guys are doing, just uh, to reach someone, even in the business world, like yeah. to be like yeah. stand out from the normal people. You have to be creative. Yes. Exactly. And also, we need to do this in the ministry as well because yes. you can't just you know reach out to people. Jesus was creative. That's right. He's very creative. We want to talk to the Samaritan woman in the pier and talk about water, and it's exactly. just not preaching. Yes. yes. But uh, yeah. It's all yours. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I think we live in crazy times right now. Yes. And there's so much darkness all around, yeah. hopelessness, depression. Yeah. And, you know, as I look through history, those are the times God moves the most. Yes. And, you know, where evil abounds, grace does more abound. Yes. And, and I just think we're in store for some amazing days to yes. come. And I believe that what God's wanting to do right now on the earth is to create a revivolution. I believe the world is waiting for a revivolution. Totally and agree. what I mean by a revivolution is a great awakening yeah. in the church that leads to a great harvest through the church to the world because so many people need Jesus right yeah. now. There's so much hopelessness and sickness and despair and depression. And, and yeah. the answer is Jesus. It's That's always so been the true. answer, yeah. and we have the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So I think God right now is looking to raise up an army that will be awakened and that will take some risk, even a little bit of risk, to yes. reach out to the people around them and each one reach one to create a revivolution. That's and good. I believe that God wants to, to, to save the whole world. I mean, let's face That's it, true. he's the ultimate globalist. Yes. Right? God is the ultimate globalist. For God so loved the world yes. that he sent his one and only son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life, abundant life, yeah. a thrive life. Not when we die and go to a place called heaven alone, but right here and right yeah. now, God can change our lives. And I believe God wants to use each and every one of us. So true. And so, you know, in order for that to happen, we need creativity. Correct. Like you were mentioning, Jesus going about doing good wherever he was, and he didn't heal the same way every time. One yeah. time he said, pick up your mat. Another time he spit in somebody's eye and said, be healed. And another time he would just declare, you're healed, or mm -hmm. pick up your mat and walk. You know, whatever it might have been, it was different every single time. And, yeah. and I think one of the things that we fail to realize is that the same Holy Spirit that was anointing Jesus is inside of us, Man. giving us the same kind of creative ideas that he was giving Jesus all the yeah. time as he was partnering with the Holy Spirit yeah. in how to release the kingdom of God 
wherever you went. And so we've done some crazy things over the years. And yeah, I want to hear it. I had one, I had one, uh, you know, one other show here, and we were talking yeah. about treasure hunting, Correct. which I developed back in about 2003. Okay. And that's where we would ask Holy Spirit to give us clues, words of knowledge, and we'd write them down on a piece of paper in five different categories, a location, a person's name, what they might be wearing, what they might need uh, help for, and then something unusual. And we'd have like six, uh, five spaces in each one of those categories to fill mm -hmm. out. So we'd have five names, five locations, five different articles of clothing. And then we'd go ask Holy Spirit, okay, where do you want us to start? Oh, a bench at a park. That's what we had mm -hmm. for a location. And we would go and, and, and then we would find these treasures. Yeah. Because it's a treasure hunt, and Correct. God considers every single person so, as yeah. a treasure. And so yeah. we would be on a treasure hunt looking for these treasures, and we'd find them, and we'd show them our map and say, look it, we're at a park bench here in a park, and you have a blue shirt on with pink pants on and, and, and polka dot tennis shoes on. Look at that. And do you by any chance have any back pain? Oh, yes, I do. Well, you see, God oh. sent us here to find you today because he wants to know he wants you to know how much he loves you and has a plan for your life. And mm. it's the kindness of God Amazing. that leads to repentance. So we would heal them. We would prophesy over them and they would end up wanting Jesus in their life. And so, I mean, like on one occasion, for example, we were at a mall and, uh, and I, I felt like God wanted to heal somebody's back. And we were doing a treasure hunt, and, and I had bench. And there was this Islamic family sitting yeah. on a bench in the middle of the mall. And it was a grandma, her daughter, her son-in-law, and three kids. And she's got the veil on and everything, and the daughter does as well. And so I walk up, and I say, hey, excuse me, but uh, do any of you have back pain? Well, the grandmother had severe back pain, and uh, she was in a lot of pain. And yeah. so... I said, well, I could actually take care of that because I'm a physician's assistant. Okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, we're all physician's assistants if we're in Christ. We yes. help the great physician. physician. Yes. So we assist him. It's our risk. It's his presence and power, right? Yes. So I said, I'm, I'm a physician's assistant, and I could take care of that. I specialize in, yeah. in taking care of back problems. And they said, well, well, how much does it cost? And I said, well, it's free. Well, why would it be free? I said, because I've been given this gift to do this for free, uh, and so I give it away for free. They said, well, where would you have to go to, to get the treatment? And I said, well, I'm mobile. I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, take care of you. I treat you right here. They said, really? I said, yeah, I could do it right now. Would you like that? Oh, well, okay. And so... I asked for permission and I put my hand on her lower back, grandma's lower back. Now, that's not a, a yeah. you know, that's, a, radical. <laughs> that's really radical, right? But I'm a physician's assistant, so I had a lot of leeway. So I put my hand on grandma's lower back and after, a, and I started laughing actually. Wow. Because, you know, the joy of the Lord is our empowerment Man. and in his presence is fullness of joy yes. and laughter is like medicine. Yes. Right? right. So I just learned a long time ago, I want to release God's presence and yeah. there's no better way to do that than through laughter. And uh, so I, I'm laughing over her and all of a sudden she starts laughing as I have my hand on her lower back. She's, you know, just <laughs> laughing, like jiggling. And, and all of a sudden she goes, whoa, I feel amazing. And she takes my hand off of her back and puts it on her neck and says, do my neck now, do my neck. <laughs> and so I did. And, and, and then after that was over, she gets completely healed in her neck and her back. Wow. Wow. And all five of them hold out their hands to receive Jesus right yeah. in the middle of the mall. Wow. And then they want Bibles. And you see, this is how we can create a revolution through amazing. our creativity, through just coming up with something like, I'm a physician's assistant, and I can take care of you right here, right now. Yeah. I mean, I went to Coachella, uh, which is a music festival, yeah. in which there's about 100,000 young people at this, this concert festival. venue, yeah. festival, music yeah. festival. And I'm the oldest guy there, and the guy who took me had a backstage pass, and he said, hey, listen, Kevin, you can't you know, say you're a pastor or minister or anything like that, because we're meeting all the backstage people, the musicians and everything. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, that's fine. Just tell, tell everybody that we meet. I'm a traveling mystic, <laughs> right? So 
everywhere we go, hey, this is my friend Kevin. He's a traveling mystic. And okay. all these DJs and, and artists and everything, they're, wow, a traveling mystic? What is that? And I would tell them, well, I channel. And I know for a lot of Christians that, I mean, you think, well, channel, well, no, no, that's evil. No, I, I channel God's presence in me and through me to them. And then I tell them about their life and the good plans and purposes that God has for them. And if there's anything wrong with their body, I'll heal you. And, and so we saw so many miracles in this weekend yeah. at Coachella wow. and prophesying over DJs who were crying after they would get off the stage and God would give me a word Amazing. of knowledge about their life, all because I approached it as a traveling mystic instead of the pastor Kevin Dudman, you know, coming <laughs> wow. to them. They would have never have received me. And yeah. so along with the creative entrance, it's the creative raw power of God as well mm. that heals people, that gets secrets to their hearts, to not condemn them, but to show that God yeah. knows them and he has a good plan yes. and a good purpose to their life. So we we have all kinds of great stories of how we've well, it's been It's just about taking the creativity. risk and being yes. obedient and then you, know, you dive in and the Holy Spirit is there and he's using yeah. you, he's honoring your yes. risk and your boldness. That's a beautiful, beautiful. Well, and you know, Teresa's he, got so many great well, creative testimonies. Well, Jesus is perfect <laughs> theology. And Jesus, when he, when he touched people, he's, he spoke in stories. He spoke in a creative way that people could identify with who he was. He, and he was out in the marketplace. He wasn't in just the synagogue, but he was out there with the people. And what I loved is like he taught me, he taught all of us here, that if we just tell the story in the way that they can identify with the story, their hearts just come alive. And so I love to take create creative ways out to the marketplace. So I was in Santa Cruz, which is in mid mid like right around like San Francisco, but a little bit more by the beach, mm -hmm. a little bit south. And so we were setting up and we had easels where I had my paintings and we had people that were painting that were from this church and just little ideas for people to sit down and, and do art themselves. And also we had like face painting, we had balloons, we had different creative stuff for kids to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, this um, I saw this woman that was, she looked to be maybe about 20. She, uh, she was lis listening to the music and I said, hey, would you like to paint? And she said, oh, I'm not a painter. I go, oh, you don't have to be, we'll give you a free lesson. Now, I hadn't yet told my, my, uh, one of my interns, hey, guess what? This is what we're going to do. And, and so, but I brought her up and she goes, okay. And she's at this easel. And I said, what do you see? Just close your eyes. What do you see? Where's the place where you would really want to be? And she saw these mountains. And so she started to create it. And my, uh, my intern was showing her how to paint all this stuff and how to do that. And at the end, we just started to prophesy over her. Oh, we, we see these purple mountains as this, as that. And she just starts to cry. And she goes, you know, uh, I've been alone. I'm in college. I don't know anybody in Santa Cruz. I was just here wondering if I should just go home. Uh, and yet, because you came up and we were able to not only lead her to Christ, but the, the girl that was next to us painting, who was from our team, went to the same college. Hmm. And so they, they hooked up and now uh, they're, they're growing a lot too. So it's amazing what can happen if we just take a risk. Yeah. Uh, I was at Huntington Beach Pier, which yes. is close to here. And we were setting up with uh, all different kinds of, you know, creative ways that people could engage. And we, as this person was painting, this guy came up and he goes, wow, I love I love the painting that you have. And I go, well, well, tell me your story because creativity engages people. And hmm. So they said, well, you know, my friend here, he's, he just lost custody of his daughter and he has to get involved in drug rehab and this. And he said that he would come to church potentially with me this Sunday. I go, wow, well, let me kind of tell you why I painted this. So they're very intrigued. And then my friend goes, oh my gosh, and this painting I believe is, is for you and starts to read his mail through this painting that she had just done. Uh, there yeah. on on the um, on the uh, boardwalk, and then he goes, "Oh my gosh, do you think that God could love me even though I've let my daughter down? Do you mm -hmm. think that He has a plan for me? I mean, do I have to work hard? Do I have to do this?" I go, "No, you just, you just grace is free." Yes. 
And so uh -huh. he gave his life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then we saw him the following Sunday at this church that was outside and, and he was there. And so it's just the power of what can happen when we take a risk, but also yeah. what are people into? Correct. I mean, everybody yeah. walking down the pier is into art. I mean, many people were painting themselves. We had stations where they could paint and then we would talk about who they were through the painting. And so creativity brings people into an engagement of who am I in God's story? Who am I in the story of life? And then mm -hmm. through all different kinds of creative ways, you can touch people and yes. you can like see them grow. And so face painting for kids, uh, balloons for kids, things like that, engage them. I was in, um, I was down in, uh, in another city and we were doing an outreach a couple, a couple months ago and we were just taking balloons and we were crowning these kids and saying, you are royalty. You are and started wow. to mark them for who God was. And this girl who's about 10 just started to cry. She goes, Oh my gosh, I didn't know that I was worth anything. My dad left when I was three and uh, starts to tell her story. And we were able to lead her to Christ. Amazing. And so there's things like that that happen because, because creativity is like the way in. I, I was talking, I did this survey and I asked people, I said, have you, and these are just Christians, I said, have you ever seen the gospel misrepresented out in the marketplace. Mm. And I'm thinking about the huge crosses with repent, you're going to hell kinds of stuff. And they go, yeah. And 98% 90, said that they had seen that. And then my next question was, did that ever stop you mm. from taking a risk and going out? And 78% said yes. Ah. So the real answer to this whole thing is like people are afraid mm. because they've seen it done in a way that actually condemns people versus bringing them to Christ in a way that's yeah. creatively a part of his heart. So we get to change the way that people think about who God is. Imagine yeah. everybody, you know, you, you've, you've seen people with trucks and you just go, oh, I don't want that. Or, you know, they have this really mean look on their face and, and you're going, oh, I don't want to go over there. It's too scary. But when you see a balloon, hey, how are you doing? What, what yeah. are you up to? Hey, uh, come over here and look at this art or whatever. They get so excited because we're yeah. engaging them in the heart level. Mm. So that's what's so amazing at what we do. Yeah, and I mean, like just last weekend, we were out on the pier yeah. And, yeah. and we've got 12 artists who are, are painting mm. uh, prophetic art. Like they're asking Holy Spirit to show them what to paint. And then when people come up, they start telling these explain this artwork with them, yeah. to about their life wow. and it's uncanny how many times this art relates to their life especially with the prophetic word that's that's been given and along with that then it's a party atmosphere we have music going on yeah. and and drinks and food oh yeah everything <laughs> and so it's yeah. like it's a festival as opposed yeah. to us preaching at them, we're actually inviting them into yeah. a culture of of God's goodness, and, yeah. and it's amazing. What you guys share is extremely important because we have a lot of wonderful people are watching, but uh, some of them got sheltered inside the four walls of yes. the church, and yes. nothing against the church is the fellowship, no. it's the family of God, it's the place of worship. Yeah. But if we just uh, stay in the four walls of the church and being sheltered from week to week and waiting for the people to come to us that was not jesus that was not yeah. paul the apostle even john maxwell said 50 percent of the people they're not going to step a foot in the church no. right so how can we just encourage people to get out of the four walls and take some risk <laughs> yeah well i think first of all we have to understand that jesus said go not come yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> I mean, like, and if we want to grow, like in Ezekiel 47, the river of God flows out from Correct. the temple where we worship, but it goes out. Yes. And then the river increases the further it goes out. Yeah. And so a lot of Christians are thinking they're going to get fed and, and fulfilled in the church building, when in fact they're going to grow way more when they start yes. giving it away. Even that's Jesus right. said, exactly. if you give, it'll be measured back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And that's that Ezekiel 47 picture you know, about yeah. how we're supposed to be reaching out, which was fulfilled at the beginning of the day of Pentecost, yeah. and it's yeah. still going on. I think a lot of people, they feel like, well, I'm not an evangelist. Yeah. So that's not my job. 
you know, that's a job for an evangelist. Kevin mm -hmm. and Teresa Dudman, you know, let them go out and do this. But, you know, when Jesus, you know, called his 12 together right before the day of Pentecost, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be mm -hmm. my witnesses. Yeah. Evangelists are the ones who are supposed to be equipping the saints for ministry mm -hmm. to go out and witness. All mm -hmm. of us have a responsibility to be as yeah. ambassadors. Yeah. And we're all called to witness. Not all of us are evangelists, but mm -hmm. all of us are supposed to be witnessers. Yeah. Problem is we're scared. We don't know That's what was, we yeah. don't know what's yeah. inside of us yeah. to the degree that can touch other people around us. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, I can't paint or I can't you know, come up with, I'm not going to go yeah. out as a traveling mystic, or I'm not going to say I'm a physician's assistant, <laughs> or, you know, that guy's crazy, he's wild, <laughs> I, and I am, you know, and I, I love, love it. it. I love it, but, too. <laughs> but, you know, like, I was just at dinner yeah. with a friend, and I said, hey, I'm going to go prophesy to these, this young couple at the next table over. And so I got up and went over there, and and I had a word of knowledge for him about a business thing that I saw him starting. Mm. And, and he's like, how would you know that? Like, I'm just getting ready to start this business. I just graduated from college, da, 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 da. I said, don't worry about it. God's going to, you know, make a way for you. And he was yeah. really touched by that. And then I said, and I see like, like poetry and art and a teacher. Like, oh, does that make sense to you at all? Mm. She goes, well, that, I'm actually getting ready to go work on my, my PhD in literature, poetry, art, and and part of my teaching. doctoral program, I have huh. to teach, and I actually <laughs> want to become a teacher. How would you know that? And I said, well, God shares with me these things because he wants you to know that he has a good uh, plan and a purpose uh, for your life. And then and I said, well, like, so do you do art and poetry and that kind of stuff? He goes, yeah, in fact, my friend uh, brought me to this church up like 500 uh, miles north of here in Redding, California, took me to this church called Bethel Church. Have you ever heard of it? I go, well, I was on staff there for 18 years. <laughs> and she goes, well, my friend took me into this bookstore and I got this book called Art and Poetry, but I forget the author's name. And I said, you mean Teresa Dudman? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, that's the, that's the name. And I said, well, it's my wife. <laughs> and so out, out of that, we invited them to come to our church service. The, the next, about two weeks later. Okay. And uh, it was our first Sunday. And here, this couple, this young couple Crazy. show up, and there we, we did this like love tunnel, fire tunnel ah. kind of a thing at the end where we just bless people with the yeah. presence of God. And uh, we're going through, and I, I forget what they even look like. We witnessed to so many people, it's hard to remember yeah. who we've even touched. So we're go they're going through this line, and, and Teresa doesn't know who they are at all, but this yeah. guy's looking scared to death. So all of a sudden she's like, hey, is this like, have you ever experienced the presence of God before? Uh-uh. Well, come on over here. So meanwhile, the friend I was with at dinner that night, he says, hey, would you like to meet the girl that you ministered to at the restaurant? I said, absolutely. So did. And he said, well, where's my, where's my boyfriend? I said, well, I don't know. And then we see it and <laughs> Teresa's like ministering to him. Well, so we go over came. there. Yeah, he came to Christ. And, and yeah. And he, she was leading him to Jesus. Yeah. And she falls down on the ground crying, I've been praying for him for so uh. long. And now he's finally received Jesus, all because I just got out of my comfort zone uh. and prophesied over somebody Goodness. at dinner. I think I think like there's there's something that happens, Cato, and and if you're out there, there's something that happens when we confront this um, the truth that that the good news inside of us mm. is so valuable to the yeah. people outside. But I think it's the way that it's packaged that really bothers us. What really, when we come out and we have a smile on our face, yeah. when we have something to give away, when we have like an art card or a, a photo on our phone, hey, have a great day. Hey, here's a photo that I, I took at the beach. Uh, just to encourage you, um, those kinds of stuff, it, it brings, it helps us to build an, an in common kind of platform mm. to go into a greater level of intimacy in their relationship. So that's the whole thing. It's like, it's just learning how to be natural mm. in any situation by just asking questions. Hey, how are you? Yes. How's your day? Yeah. Uh, those kinds of questions, engaging them and then mm. honoring them or mm. talking about, hey, I, I, I have a gift for you, whether it's a prophetic word, whether it's like, a song that we've written or whether it's like 
something in gardening, whatever it is, God uses those things mm. like he did, you know, I'm just getting back to Jesus. Jesus spoke to, spoke to the people in ways that they could identify with them. Yeah. So he talked about sheep because they were involved in, in sheep. He talked about the lost coin because they were involved in that. He talked about the prodigal because that was in the cultural milieu of that day. In the same way, we don't talk to people like that. We talk to people because we're not outside into the marketplace. We don't know what they're into. Correct. And yeah. so what we have to do is find out what are the youth into? What are their favorite songs? What are the things that they burn for? Why is identity so important to them? And then bring those bring those subjects up. The same with kids. Hey, what what uh, what year are you in school? What's your favorite subject? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of questions bring that connection connection to a deeper level of understanding. So if you're out there and you're going, I can't do this, uh, you can do it. It's just you learning to connect and be yourself. Yeah. And then learning what you have in common with that person and then creatively engaging them, asking for a word of knowledge or mm -hmm. asking for a word of encouragement. And the more you do it, it becomes addictive. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I tell people like when I was going out in Huntington last last week, it's like that's my favorite thing to do uh -huh. because it's like I mean, my art's not meant to be in my garage. It's meant to be out there. Somebody got so touched by one of my art pieces because it reminded him of his daughter that he bought it because she's a prodigal. Mm. And you know, you just sit there and you go, Lord, if we're not out there to touch people, then what are they gonna get? What, what are they gonna yeah. receive? So it's, it's important to know like you can do this. Can. And it's all, it was also cool, we were at dinner one night and mm. you had a card in your purse that <laughs> you, she had made. Yeah. She had made this card and, yeah. and uh, yeah, I, I had made this card, and it had said, uh, there was like a, almost like a Matterhorn, like Disneyland, and it says you can climb to the top of any mountain, and you opened it up because God is always with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And so I felt that the card was in my purse. We're going into the restaurant, Kevin and I, and I saw this woman that was on the curb, and her head was down with, with two people next to her, and I go, well, Lord, if she comes into the restaurant, then I'll give it to her. Like, I, I, you know, I was, I was a little chicken there. Uh, so she comes into the restaurant. And she's talking to the manager. So I said, Kevin, I'm, I feel like I have a divine appointment. I'll, I just, I'll be right back. So I take my card. I'm by the door, and she comes over, and this is what I said. Excuse me. Uh, I, I could tell like there's some stuff going on, and I did this card. I believe it's for you. Is it okay if I just read it? It's just going to take a minute. And I read it and she literally shrieked and just fell in my arms. Wow. And she told me, uh, she told me that her boyfriend that she'd been living with for four years had, and they had separated six months ago, had just come in the restaurant. She's a server and he had brought his, um, his new fiance there. And she was at the, she was like, still had hopes for this relationship. And, she, and I said, isn't it interesting that I said, God will never leave you. Yeah. He will never forsake you. And there I was able to pray with her and bless her and share the good news. Yeah. So awesome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The time goes by so fast. <laughs> but one thing we like to uh, end with, and then we're going to go do uh, more worship. But uh, just I wanted to say something for the people that are watching now, because how can they can break out of the fear? Because fear is crippling them. And they're missing out the joy you guys are mm -hmm. enjoying yes. because it's very, very important. And how, how this is going natural inside of you everywhere you go, like <laughs> restaurant, the pier, anywhere, yeah. just God's presence and, and it's connecting. Yeah. So if you would look at the camera and share for a minute or two and then we'll go back to you worship. Want to go, yeah. go ahead. Um, sure. I, I really want to say to you right now, if you do have fear, yeah. it's because... You are, you're so needed in seeing the people that will come if you say yes. So you have to look at, like Jesus said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. There's something about looking at the people that will be coming in because you said yes. And so I just declare over you right now that God is with you and that through these testimonies, you're going to get a fire in your bones to go out there today, tomorrow, and the next week and say, I'm gonna reach out to somebody because I have a photo, because I have this, because I have that. 
and I'm going to ask God for a picture for somebody, and I'm going to go find my treasure. And I just release on you the confidence to know mm -hmm. that even as Jesus said to his disciples in John 20, as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. Uh -huh. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, that the same spirit that was in Jesus is in you. And you have everything it takes. You don't have to be a professional artist. You don't have to be a professional musician. You don't have to be a poet. You don't have to, to be, you know, be Billy Graham or some special audience style speaker. All you need is a little compassion. And when we have compassion for people around us, the Holy Spirit will give us words of knowledge. He'll give us insights into their heart to connect with them, to give them hope and a future. And so it's not really that difficult. It's just about helping people and releasing the kindness of God towards them, whether it's an encouraging word about their future or about their present circumstances or healing. You know, you don't have to be the physician's assistant in your mind. Just reach out and release God's presence. And I guarantee you his power will start showing up. So. Oh, no. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we'll have to uh, have you over and over and over yes, here. Yes, we have to, we have to come back. It's yes. time for a revivolution. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, uh, okay, we're going to get into some uh, praise and worship. Stay with us and just uh, think of what you've heard because God has been talking to so many of you today. He want to set you free from fear. Yeah. He want he wanna you to enjoy the, really the joy of the Lord and reaching someone and blessing someone. So we're going to worship and then we're going to end up with the blessing songs over you guys. Yeah. Love you, Lord For your mercy never fails me In darkest night we're close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing all my life And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Sing your goodness Your goodness is running after It's running after Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my And all my life you have been so, so good 
with every breath that I am leaving, I will see of the goodness of God. Beside you, all around. 